Hello and welcome to another edition of the Moving Iron Podcast. This podcast is proudly provided by Axon, helping dealers move more iron for almost 100 years. Find out more at axontire.com. Axon was started almost 100 years ago out of a passion for keeping agriculture moving. It's that same passion that drives them today. With a vision for a better experience for both farmer and dealer, they set out to create a better way to move more iron. When you partner with Axon, you get immediate access to a full range of products and solutions designed to meet the complex needs of today's grower. Axon carries all major brands and sizes of tires, wheels, and tracks. From custom colors and sizes to fully customized wheels, you can have the solution for virtually any problem today's farmer is trying to solve. To find more or become an Axon dealer, please visit axontire.com. Moving iron in the 21st century. Hardworking people working hard for you and me. Time and time again Through the years you'll find us here Moving Iron Hello and welcome to Moving Iron Podcast number 230. This edition of the Moving Iron Podcast is brought to you by Axon Tire, helping needlers move, move more iron for the past 100 years. For more information, go to axontire.com. Also, Arrow, if you're looking for a great place to have your salespeople sell more stuff, check out heyarrow.com for all their great products out there. Not harrow.com. Not harrow.com. Hey, comma, arrow. Well, not, there's no comma in the... But that's how you'd say it. Yeah, yeah. Because you wouldn't say, hey, arrow. Yeah, you Everybody's wouldn't. like, oh, yeah, it's on that. Yeah. It's on the back of the field cultivator. It's on the field cultivator back there. I'm going to go out there and hey, arrow that straw yeah. field. Yeah, you look at something kind of funny and be like, hey, arrow, why, you got, why are you stressing the hair part so much? <laughs> doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <coughs> But they are a fantastic outfit. They are a fantastic outfit. Continue on. Yes, they are. As you can tell, Aaron Fennell's with me again. <laughs> and Aaron and I have been bantering around what we should talk about this week. and Lively banter. Lively banter. And the one thing that we don't talk about very often, but we should talk about more, is support equipment. Whether that's grain carts, seed tenders, augers. Fertilizer. Fertilizer thing whatever you know all kinds of fun stuff out there we don't talk about it near enough trucks and trailers trucks and trailers all those fun things and Billy big rig <laughs> <laughs> you met my friend jake <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> so one, one thing that we do uh, i think we're going to spend a little time on that just because of where we're at right now in the season that we're in right so no matter where you're at right now year we are in the throes of corn harvest throws yeah soybean harvest and um Probably some Milo out there getting getting cut. There's probably some sunflowers. Sunflowers. Beans uh, are done pretty much. Beans. Some no, there's still some beans. They're yeah. dry beans. Yeah, there's see. a few dry beans out there. There's a lot of soybeans out yeah. there. A lot of soybeans. When we say beans, we're talking about dry beans. Yeah. Pintos because, and northerns. Yeah, we, kidneys. We don't there's a few there's a handful of soybeans out here where we're at, but when we say beans, we're not talking about like Iowa, Illinois beans. Right. We're talking edible beans so keep that in mind as a glossary of terms for the uh, for the podcast <laughs> <laughs> hashtag not soy beans <laughs> yeah so that's so okay so here we are in the situation that we're in where there are limited number of machines with engines right whether it's tractors combines um Choppers. At this point, there's a limited number of scoop shovels and gloves. Well, that's, also. that's true. Very true. So the one thing that has picked up pace quite a bit <clears throat> and something we did anticipate seeing happen just because of what it is, um, some of the last things to get updated are tillage equipment, support equipment, and to some extent, like combine heads. Right. Right. Those three things are typically your last things to get kind of updated. And the reason for that is, you know, you've, you know, for a few dollars you can really, you don't really need to update it, right? I mean, there's not like, you got a few wear parts that are going to wear out, you know, augers and those kind of things. You got some bearings here and there, but it's not like you're going to strip down your grain cart, re it, and then, you know, right. put it back in the field, right? Because right. it, it doesn't need that. I mean, you're going to look at your augers. You're going to look at your your augers. augers gearbox, bearings. Yeah. And those that, right? Augers, auger housing, gearbox, bearings, those kind of things. And that's really all you're taking a look at. Unless it's really damn old. Yeah, unless it's really damn old. Now, I have seen some grain carts that 
would be capable of only augering grapefruits. True. And even then, it does would, happen. You'd see some. You'd see some falling through the bottom. <laughs> right. Uh, out would definitely be juice flowing. Yep. So, one of the things that we look at right now, from a from a uh, short line perspective, there was from twenty, you know, twelve. 13, 14, and you, know, you had a lot of new shorelines getting sold because people had money, right? Right. So 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Kind of um, like in 19, you could yeah. probably buy a lot of new right. 15, 15 or 16 <laughs> grain carts. All exactly. Groups. Yeah, so you had, you had all of that going for you. So right now, a lot of that stuff's been cleared out, right? You know, so you got some older grain carts that have been cleared out. You've got some older, you know, uh, augers, you know, whether, you know, whatever, whoever makes them, Westfield, whoever whoever's making those those augers you got a lot of that stuff cleared out but now what you're getting from that too is now you're starting to see some of those those used pieces come back in right right used grain carts so some of the used grain carts that are coming in are um, stuff that was bought new in 2015 right and um, they've got two or three seasons on them because it was the, the 17 or 18 right year that they bought the 15 right, right. so it's got two or three years on the scene now they're updating it to maybe they're getting a bigger cart to go for well, yeah, for a grain right. cart that's pretty good timing oh sure you know Absolutely. depending on acres bushels yeah. all that kind of shit but four years five years yeah. right on no, yeah and so these people too they're going from a thousand bushel cart to a 1200 bushel cart or a 1300 bushel cart some guys jump to a 1500 bushel cart you know it just depends on what they're doing in their in their overall some uh, guys are going to a rail car on track some people are doing that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. But as you sit back and look at, at this whole spectrum of things, the one thing that is, I think that we can see happen through the end of the year is that the short line manufacturers, not that they aren't um, saddled with the same um, problems that the mainline manufacturers are, but it's a different kind of problem. Right? right. They're not waiting on. You know, chips. They're not waiting on this. They're just, you know they're looking at steel and rubber, and they're looking at you know which are labor. both a dumpster fire. But getting a coil of steel in right is probably easier than getting a microchip in. Yeah, at this point. which is bad shit crazy, but that's the world we live in. Yeah. Now, granted, by the time he orders mm-hmm. that steel, and then you wake up the next day, it got higher. Right. And then by the time that coil's done, it got higher. Yeah. And then as soon as they set it on that truck, it got higher. Right. So what you order and what shows up yep. might be two, five, three times what it started at. Five price increases later. But you later, can get it. But you can get it. That's exactly right. So when you look at, at that perspective, to me, I think that... Which know, makes you wonder, are the majors holding out because it's not their price for chips? Like, are there chips they just won't... I th- Pony up? I think um, as much as I Or would do you think 11 billion farmers pissed off, whereas my machine would prevent that from happening? I would think the latter would prevent that the from happening. The 11 billion. As much as I like a good conspiracy theory, and you know I like conspiracy And I do. Theory, yeah. You do. Um, yes. as much I, as I, I enjoy <laughs> yours. That way I don't have to mess with it. You do enough for both of us. I do enjoy a good conspiracy theory, but I don't think that's one of them. Because if that were the case, um, whoever came up with that idea probably wasn't thinking right like you think they'd want to hoard the chips and not let other people get them but instead they've they all got together and said hey guess what everybody pretend like there's a chip problem every every single one of us i I I think that part i I think that's ridiculous (laughs) they get together and pretend there's a problem that's ridiculous i don't what else is it it's it's a labor problem. It's a logistics problem. It's not problem. steel from Rona. It can't be. Well, well yeah, it could is. be. Everything is. I drove yesterday through Alliance, uh-huh. Bridgeport, Sterling, and Sydney. Right. Okay. Did store little store visit day. Uh-huh. And while on that path, uh-huh. there is not uh-huh. one damn building I saw that does uh-huh. not have a, we're hiring, we're oh, sure. hiring. Yeah. Why doesn't everybody get off their ass and go to work? I realize that's not directly related to this, but in the flip side it is because we have nothing to sell because people won't go to work. I think that's some of that. I think that's a big part if of it. If you can put yeah. this hamburger together, perhaps you can put these wheels on a disc. Yeah. And, shockingly enough... And get way more pay for that. Well, in today's world, I watched the McDonald's the other day where they had... It was... Uh, where was it at? Oh, we're in Nashville. 
Is in Nashville. Is in like Dallas. eighteen bucks. Eighteen man. bucks yeah. an hour, and they're going to give you five hundred dollars sign. <laughs> yes, I saw that too. Five hundred dollars <laughs> to go to McDonald's. Go to McDonald's and go to work. Damn. Really and not only that, underneath that, they said we pay daily, and I asked, "What does that mean?" You know, well. They're just going to pay you for the day that you work because they're not for sure if you're going to come back tomorrow. Right. So they're going to give you an incentive like, I'll tell you what we'll do. If you come back tomorrow, we'll do the skin. Okay? I'll give you, you know, $56 if yeah. you come back tomorrow. So, I mean, I think... Kind of like the gas station here in town. Yeah. Stimulus checks every two weeks. Inquire within. <laughs> <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> There's your check, people. Yeah. Uh-huh. Damn it. They have... Uh, so... The logistics are also a big problem. You know, like we yeah. had, we had well, Valley. And that's yeah. a shortage again. Well, yeah. So, like, Valley Transport talked to, about, to us about that, me and I Summit, and they were talking, like, it's not that they don't have the trucks to haul stuff with. They just don't have the drivers to right. haul those trucks. So, this But, this, conversely, uh-huh. segue into support equipment, he, even the semis... He said they're 18 months out. He goes, if I want a new Pete today, it's 18 months. That's valley buying it. That's not you or me. Right. Now, most farmers don't go buy a new Class A truck, but they get the trade off of Valley's trade, right. probably. You know, Valley buys new, a big regional bull hauler, mm-hmm. another equipment guy, whoever, buys their trades. You know, they're half, million, three-quarter, whatever they are. And then probably after that, it goes farmer. Right. Now, there's a lot of farmers who do buy that second truck, Mm -hmm. especially with current prices. But even the support equipment, a semi. We don't talk about semis on here. We don't directly, I mean, I'm a truck geek, but it's not our bread and butter. Mm -hmm. It affects that, though. Oh, sure. Everything. Everything is a direct trickle down to it from. I've had it. You've got to have the new to get to the used to get to the used to get to the used. Right. right. And as things progress along this year and things move along, um, that's why I think that the support equipment thing is going to be the short line stuff is going to be more readily available. And I think there's going to be a lot more of that stuff updated. It's yeah. easier to tra- It's easier to haul because, like, most people, most places, most places, I'm going to say most, you know. But if you live like where we live at, right? I'm paying it, right? If I wanted to get a high planes, yeah. If I wanted to get a, a short line piece of equipment within about two or three hundred miles of where we live at, some manufacturer somewhere is oh, making yeah. something. You know what I mean? Well, you know, every or, town or you got in like Kansas, a Beaver Valley or something. Yeah, like that, and right? every town in Kansas that has a welder, yeah, has a manufacturing plant. They do. They they do have a lot of that stuff. Get yourself a big G, for example. That's a great example. There you go. Or every damn brand of pickup, flatbed, gooseneck yep. stock trailer, yep. box scrapers. Yep. Everything is made in Kansas. <laughs> big G. Gleaner combines. Big G is one of the single most interesting uh, pieces of tillage and equipment. It, and how fantastic that Big G got a shout-out on the moving iron. That's true. Once upon a time, yeah. the world's biggest disc. Oh, they still make the biggest disc. Well... Right, they're di- like you have everybody else's disc over here, and then you have the big G that is close to, you know, Big Bud would slip right, right with that. With right. that thing. So. just in case you need a sixty foot disc, why not? <laughs> and then I'll tell you what, within like a, I'm trying to build tram lines. I need a sixty foot disc and yeah. a sixty foot field cultivator in my twenty four row thirty exact emerge. Yep, tram lines. If you ever get a chance to go by the world headquarters for, for Big G, it is. Which is? It's uh, Harper, Kansas. Harper, Kansas. I remember right. That's where Dewey's is from. See, yeah. everything is made in Kansas. I'm pretty sure it's Harper. If it's not Harper, it's right by there somewhere. I'm pretty sure it's Harper, though. If I remember right, there's a Chevy dealership, and across the street is is the Big G welding oh. shop. And that's what it looks like. It looks right. like a welding shop. And there'll be, you know, the doors will be open, and you'll see sparks flying and everything else. And on the other side, there's one that rolled through the other side, and they're done. It is a massive hunk of metal. It's still dark green. It's still dark green. Nice. And I tell you, within a... God, one of them on a Steiger would be ugly, wouldn't it? Yeah. It'd be a different... Two two kind of crazy greens together. Mm -hmm. But they have a... It's a... It's a very interesting thing to go look at. And the people that use them in that that area, swerve swerve on. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I've looked at a few on trade, and I had... Couldn't find them anywhere to have a comparable. Right. 
And when you have to call the manufacturer, it's like, we think something like this is worth <laughs> used. That's a bad place to start. 50 cents yeah. off of what it was new? That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a bad start to, to going down that path. But uniquely enough, I believe those kind of machines are going to be a lot more that kind of stuff is well, going to be up yeah. because that's what's and available. We've seen a lot this you paying attention to sales coming through right. the last week. Seed tenders. Yeah. Saddle tanks. Mm-hmm. You know, just like Yeah. Seed tenders. Okay. Seed tenders what was the last right time, and left. When was the last time someone thought about, you know what, I'm gonna update my seed tender right. in the middle of harvest. Right. Right? Seed tenders like the thing the guy's like, ooh. Probably should think about getting a seed tender for playing season two weeks before I go to the field. You know what he's doing? He's out there picking corn right now, mm-hmm. and he's like, okay, that tractor, my 21 will get here in 23, my combine, hopefully by next year, his planner got completely, like, order bank closed, didn't get built, I guess we're running the old one. He's on down to, like, number 19 on his list, yeah. and that's the seed tender. Yep. Yeah. We're here to help. Yeah. <laughs> so now I want that Kawasaki engine. I don't want that Honda. Yeah. You know? Ooh. That's Fresh out. We got some Tecumsehs. Yeah. We got a whole pallet of Tecumsehs on the way. Now we do have those Briggs and Stratton's back there. I'll keep what I got. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just put a hydraulic motor on that? <laughs> Turn that off my PTO. Is that possible? <clears throat> but, yeah, they've got. So not only that, too, but if you take a look at Short line tillage manufacturers. Yeah, that's which again, that's that's like the number one short line. Sure, sure. You got you got your Landalls. You got your Dagelmans. You got your uh, Sunfly. Sunfly. Well, uh, trying whatever. to think about you know Coon Kraus. Coon Kraus. Those, but there's still that's a that's a Coon product. So I mean, there's a yeah, but that's still a short line. Yeah, sure. And then you've got can you buy you got, a Coon Kraus tractor? No, you can't. nope. Short line. That's a good point. Um, but with that being said, I think those those kind of things are going to see a little more speed. Great Plains. Yeah. That's uh, Kubota, though. Kubota, yeah. yeah. Sort of. I mean, it's Kubota owns it, but they still have the Great Plains name. Yeah, they're still... I think they're still, like, Great Plains, Great Plains. Yeah. They're yeah. just not... Yeah. The and Applequist family. Like the, the uh, Land Pride Right, that stuff's got more orange. Yeah, as, oh yeah, as, it's got way. I more think that's kind of what they were after. Yeah, more so than hey, let's get that forty foot air seeder behind our nemesis. Well, I mean, if you go back to look at that though, that's that's some of Kubota's um, path that they're trying to lay there right. into that large egg. Into large place. egg, yeah. hence the teaming up with Versatile. Yeah. Now, one thing we're really good about in this podcast is bouncing around. We are. We start out one way and end up somewhere yeah, totally different. That's why their walls aren't sticky or we get stuck. We just bounce and oh shit. <laughs> now we have to talk about rail cars so for you, 30 minutes. So, I, you know, you look at, at <laughs> Kubota and what they are doing. Um, I wonder what it looks like. Which Versatile did to start with. Right. With Farm King. Because that Farm King is a hodgepodge of different brands. Right. Oh. Brought into one pot and yeah. stickered. Right, kind of makes you wonder. But that, now theirs. Yeah, that's true. Kind of makes you wonder what what they're going to do, right? I mean, like obviously R and D isn't something they're going to go out and like R and D their own combine and R and D their own for. I mean, they might be. I mean, who knows what I'm, I mean? I don't know anything, but I'm just saying it just like makes more sense. Do you think if you're going to make that big jump into right. that in that marketplace that you're going to go find that that strategic partner that already has all that stuff, and you're going to go stroke that check. Now, Wait, it's, a little bit. Is that style. what they're doing with Versatile? Maybe a little bit, a little bit. Because so you, you can get an orange and black Delta track someday. Someday, and they do have that that Russell combine. Mash. <laughs> that combine that was the by rotor baby. Then you have a choice: singles or duels. That's your that's your options. Correct. That's your options. Right Correct. There. At least you can't put a spreader on it. Well, yeah. Well. I you think that's the that's, thing that's the only way it comes. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, in Russia, they only cut wheat, so that's, that's kind of how that works. Beans. Yeah, you know, beans, too, I guess. But, yeah. But it kind of makes you think that, like, I'll pick on CNH, for example. For example. Why not? How long is the N going to stay in, or the N and the H? Right. How long is the N and the H going to stay in CNH? I mean, yeah. is, that, is that a possibility for them to say, you know what, well, we're going to, you know, uh, okay, shortage, NH, 
C and H. The back part. The money in the family, but not the popular kids. I have heard from a good friend who's a blue man, Uh dealer. We have seen nothing compared to what they're dealing with. Oh, I can't Because you think about it. Same combines, same tractors, Uh 70% commonality on the same line. Yeah. From what I gather... Not a lot of care given to the blue paint. Let's get the red ones out. Right. Which makes sense what's when you're looking at market share. Market share thing. Right. Market but, to your point, is a situation like this, screw it. I could see the two combines because they're going to, that, not by rotor twin rotor. Twin rotor, yeah. The twin rotors are gravy, right? That's right. their bread and butter. That's what they adore. Axial flow ain't going anywhere. No. So, but is it going to be a situation like this where it makes them stop and think, let's get rid of the blue, let's just build a tractor. How cool would it be, by the way, if it was purple, red and blue? Yeah. Or you go. (laughs) (laughs) That's purple. (laughs) Uh, Ema, Ema. <laughs> Did somebody yeah. start the Wabash Cannon Hall? <laughs> but maybe that happens. Yeah, maybe, yeah. You could see somebody. And was like, it me who said, "Let's not talk about shortages today"? It was you. It actually, was. you brought that up. Now that welcome uh, to my life. Ironically, a company like McCormick, I think, would have a very. Do they still? Are they? Yeah, they're still there. As far as I know, okay. still um, McCormick is one of those companies I think that could because they actually they bought when the CNH thing happened they actually got the actual I think it was the case they did tractor yes, yes. I went over that yes. so the under 150 horse because that's back that used to be the break you yeah. know like the 7430 on down yeah the everything smaller than a magnum mm-hmm. red was blue blue was red yeah the Genesis, New Holland's own tractor, yeah. versatile, mm-hmm. and the small reds, mm-hmm. McCormick. Right. Stayed in the same factory and everything. McCormick just, yeah, we'll take it. Yep. So yep. now, okay, do they get the big blue ones? If that would happen, mm-hmm. it might not ever happen. <laughs> but do they? Or does the little German white, green, orange decide, eh, let's get in the crop tractor market? You talking about Klaus? Oh, Klaus! Yeah, they already have a real crop tractor. They have the uh, Axion line. Okay, of tractors. A regular row crop tractor. Did I? I didn't know I needed to say that. I didn't want to throw <laughs> darts have, at them. But, but they have. They have. They have their own. They already have a whole. Line that's like that, saying right? the two plus two international is a regular row crop tractor. <laughs> <laughs> That's shit. That's what they're going to run with, though. That's JCB Fast Track. Hell yeah, that's a regular row crop tractor. They have, but, but yeah, I get it. They, the they've probably got billions into R&D of their, what's that big one called? The Xeron or whatever? Yeah. And then the little one's an Axon. Axon or something. Or Ax- Axeon. Axion. Yeah. Axion. Yeah. Because of the sponsors, I sometimes I confuse that. Axion tire on my Axon tractor. Exactly. Nope. Backwards. Flip it around. Yeah. But, you know, it, say that would happen, that it's going to go somewhere. Yeah. The only real thing that would ever stop this from happening would be if, for example, let's take, for example, um, take the New Holland thing. Case would have to be, Case IH, you know, C and H would have to be like, strategically, it makes sense for us to do this because the capital that we gain from this is going to, we're going to reinvest it into our company because we're, you know, we're going bankrupt or whatever. Or, you know what, we're going to take this capital, we're going to take this capital, reinvest it in our business, and we're going to, you know, take this however many hundreds of millions of dollars they give for this or billions of dollars they give for that, and we're going to put on a whole technology wing to this company like we've never seen before, and we're going to make this investment and run. From what I read on social media, that would be wise on their part. Yeah. Or what they might do is throw a bunch of money at their de- <laughs> dealers and say, go get them. That could be two. That could be a two. But that I, happens. But from a that show, happens for every color. Sure. So that'd be. Sure oh, we got we got rid of our blue tractors, and now we got seventy percent market share. Yeah. 
buying business. Yeah, I don't know. I, the, the the fundamental issue there, I think that would be maybe they go full autonomy, huh? Yeah, they could, but the the big lagger there that would that would stop any of this from happening is why would we why would we allow Kubota to become a player now? Right. Exactly. Right? So that's why none of this is ever going to happen. You're keeping it in the boys' club right now. Yeah. Right now they're going to be like none of that's ever going to. I don't. I don't foresee anything like that ever happening. Right now, I could see them saying like, "Okay, versatile. We got the tractors over here. We got the big, we got the higher horsepower four wheel drives. We've got the row crop tractors, and all we need now is a uh, is a is a hay and forge line. And we're going to go look at Crone. Who who says that? Co- Co- like like Kubota. They already have their own hay stuff. Well, they're going. We're talking like you know. Big square balers, <laughs> choppers, <laughs> right? <laughs> not not three by three round bales <laughs> <laughs> and tenders. <laughs> but so, yeah, I I get it. It they could piecemeal a lot of things together with that. I mean, they could take a look at like oh hell like yeah, nitro you do it on your farm, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, you could take very like, rarely is a guy one solid color, right? Who, who makes who makes the new one? Is it nitro or is that a Miller? Miller, the Miller, Miller Saint. Yeah, Nazi. So you get like you get, <laughs> the Zazi year the Zazi. You can. I don't think it's Nazi. I but, don't think so. But Apologize. You, you, you could say uh, you could go down a path with with okay. They go get like nitro, which is virtually the same thing. Same thing, but there's you know, or you could get like a Apache or something like that. You know, we could take those things like that, and you could start piecemealing these these one off, mm-hmm. almost like a short lines type. You could deal, and you could. And you could build this this thing around. We that. could have <clears throat> Bezos machine. That's what Agco did. Yeah, that's all Agco <laughs> is. Yeah, this I mean, one, this one, this one, this one. Oh, we don't need white. Yeah, we don't need Alice. Yeah, they're gone. Yeah. They're gone forever. Lots yeah. of big giant tears here that there's no more orange tractors yeah. made in America. But that's what happened. Yeah, I, I could, it took uh, them. What, 10 years of building three colors of tractor, then they added a fourth, and then they went to two. Now they're down to one. And now they're back to three. Fat, massy challenger. I don't think they make challengers anymore. Oh, really? I don't think. Really? I, I thought think, they I thought last they year was... They did in the thousands... Oh, it was last year, I think last year might have been the last year for the challenger tractor, or the year before. So somewhere like there's a 1050 yeah. last serial number. Snatch it! Yep. Put her on blocks in the back of the barn. Right, but but Echo has made a has made a hard a hard correction towards making Fent their their flagship. Absolutely, their flagship. Brand. Absolutely, right. you have the the new idea combine, and and that's you know. their that is their. I mean, publicly, that is their their path, their right. direction. The ideal combine, the Vario tractor, mm-hmm. the momentum planner. Yeah, that is a plus plus. Right. Okay. Can't quite swing that. We have Massey. Right. Can't quite swing that. We have Glitter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, so I think. Sure would like one of them ideals. Well, I got this new, new 2018 S98 over here. Yeah. All right, I'll take it. But they've got. So that's a that's a kind of a, a weird. And and they about. even went as far because I can remember this when I was on the red side of the fence, we were a like a Heston um, Sunflower, all the Agco former short lines that were now Agco, mm-hmm. we were that, but we weren't Massey Tractor Gleaner Combine. Okay, so got to be got got enough bite out of that world to know what was going on in the mid 2000s there was land finishers rolling out of Beloit that say Massey Ferguson there right. was drills that said Massey Ferguson mm-hmm. white planters Massey all over hell on them mm-hmm. you don't see that now right. I, like, like they tried to back then this is our brand right. like eeny meeny miny Massey Right. Okay. <clears throat> and go with it. Yeah. You know, when I was <clears throat> when I was on the Challenger side, when I worked, which that would have been about uh, the same era. Yeah. There were there were three different options that you could get. You know, you get the Challenger combine, which was the same as the Massey combine. Right. I it, forgot about that had, one. But all that had was different fairings, like a different right. fiberglass on it, right? <clears throat> S- 
some of the Gleaner Combines were the same. The A's. The A's. Which was short-lived. Right. But then some of the, uh, but then you had your traditional, um, like the F-Series, which yep. is a different combine, right? Right. Now, on the flip side of all that. The modern day N7. Yep. The idea behind the Challenger line was that it was going to be the premium. The high spec. Like, I remember going, like, we'd go bid stuff. Right. For, like, the county. And the guy that had the Massey tractor, like, I don't even know why we tried, right? Because it was just it was a waste of time. Because our base spec tractor, the base spec Challenger tractor, was like a three quarter high spec Massey tractor to start with, right? So, like, instead of having every possible option I had, it just had 75% of them. You know, they had, you know, like Deer had the, what was that, the 6415 or whatever that was, or 6405. Oh, yeah, or the Mexican built tractor. And those were designed for governmental bid tractors, right? Right. Massey had that, Deer had that, New Holland's had it forever, you know. They've had, all those people had it. And then you had the Challenger line that was like, if you really want your guys to be comfortable in a whatever, here you go, this is like, you know. So we, I mean, it was like a twenty or $30,000 per tractor. Right. Know, getting some, Even when you used all the Muni programs that were out there and everything else, you just got annihilated, right? The one thing that ACO has done now is they've kind of, they've taken that, out of the box, you know, and they've really put in it, and they're putting all their chips into the fence side of it. Yeah, and that fence side is going to be, eventually, that's going to be Agco. Right, right. <clears throat> I don't know that they're going to keep the, uh, you know, who knows what happens with Massey Ferguson? What that? What does that look like? Who knows? Globally, know. Massey will never ever disappear. That's why they never did. Growing up in that realm, okay, and. Every year that passes, you drive another half hour to get parts. That's America, but the rest of the world loves the triple triangles. Sure. They always have. They always will. Yep. They don't give a shit what Massey does in North America. I have seen that in writing from an Agco man. Right. Okay? Yeah. They don't care. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the... Uh well, that's the same way too. Like that's why they tried so hard with the yellow because that was that color of yellow that everybody drooled over. Yeah. 65A, oh, sure. 55, 45, yeah. 35, 95E. Yeah. Oh, red. I want one of them cats. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that used to piss me off. Guys say that. I'd be like, you know what's cat about that? The paint. And now it's not even cat. It's like darker than that. Right. It's it's. it's uh, it, you know, I will say no more. But that was. The but I. They are doing themselves the best possible thing they could do by grabbing that flint fent flag and raising that baby way high and proud. Sure. Yeah. Because that that the one thing Agco did do, like you said, you know, they grew through acquisitions. Right. Grow right. through acquisition. And they. I think of that every time I see their name. And those are your words in my ears. Growth through, ac- growth through acquisition. Yeah. It it worked for them. Um, they did they did get a, a presence and they did take off and run a little bit, and they've made some things. But what they've done is they have now positioned themselves. It was all because of farmhand though. <laughs> when they bought farmhand, that's when they really took. Is that, is that a, yes. I think I think it was probably something different than that. <laughs> the one the thing Blanco. I was, the one thing I am surprised about, though, is that they never made the full transition to Massey. Right. You know, I We had heard that for like 10 years. Yeah. Never did happen. Yeah. They tried. Kind well, of flirted with it, maybe, but yeah. I it, don't know. It was it was a different a different scenario that I would have figured that that's the path they would have went down. But for all, everything that we're seeing now, Fent, is, is what they're doing. Right. And the Fent, the Fent line in Europe especially is... A very popular line of tractors. Oh yeah, that's so. green and yellow over there. That is true. Pretty very true. true. Um, so that's a long ways off from grain carts. It is, but but we did talk about grain carts. We did. We did talk about grain carts. We had a we had a slight mention. A slight mention. And we that. talked about support equipment. We did. Did we not? We did. We talked about seed tenders. We talked about trucks. Yeah. Yep. But again, augers. You caught me on a conspiracy theory, and I can't help myself, but exactly, but jump down that rabbit hole. Here we go, you know? and I can't find a rabbit hole deep enough. I think Patrick Gotch needs us. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, something like that. <clears throat> something like that. All right. Where's the best place to get a hold of you at, Aaron, if they want to talk to you about what's going on in the equipment place? Well, my telephone. That's good. 308-760-1193. Text or call. And uh, I am... When we have inventory, when supplies are not backed up and the god-awful shortage word that I swore not to say today, I am pretty active on the Twitterverse throwing some deals out there and reach out to me there, man. We have all, typically... Have all kinds of stuff that I don't have listed on there. Maybe you need a six foot box blade. That I do have. Yep. Well, that's good because you never know when you might need it. I will also have you called small ag lady, but we do, <laughs> but we do have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I am Casey Seymour, and you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, go to Moving Iron LLC. Dot com and you can find all the things that are related to Moving Iron there, podcast, blogs, whatever. It's all there. You also can shoot me an email at Moving Iron Podcast at Moving Iron Podcast dot com and uh, I will absolutely respond to that. No one's ever sent me an email on that. Really? I get tweets like, you know, the Moving messages. Iron Podcast uh, at Moving Iron Podcast dot com. Yeah. Mm. And so I, maybe someday I'll get Do it. Do you think email. maybe it's because it should be? O L E C A S E at Moving Iron Podcast dot com. What does that mean? Old case. Old case. Yeah. Old case. Old case. Yeah, I guess it could be that. But <laughs> I don't. I don't think that'll that'll fly. I did tell my wife I was going to change my Facebook to Old Case. Old case. She, Do it. she didn't. She didn't like that idea. Oh, that's too bad. She's not a fan of the Old Case. Jackie, don't be so narrow minded. Yeah, there's. Come on. There's there's Casey Seymour, then there's Old Case. Yeah. yeah. The alter ego. Right. You know, Old Case is the one who uses this voice a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, good. All right. Anything else you want to throw out there before we close it down? Boy, I think we better just wrap this yeah. baby up. Better shut this one down. So with that, I am Casey Seymour with Aaron Fennell. Let's go with some iron folks. Out. You want to have a meaningful competitive advantage to help sell more equipment. Whether you represent the sales, parts, or management department of an implement dealership, there's a surprising amount of complexity when it comes to tire, wheel, and track technology. Let Axon worry about that so you can get back to supporting your customers. Axon has leveraged years of experience to create a streamlined process that gives you a proven path to help today's grower and sell more equipment. The roots of their organization go back almost 100 years to the invention of the rubber tractor tire. Supporting agriculture is the number one driver of Axon from product development through sales and service. To find more or become an Axon dealer, head over to axontire.com. In the 21st century Hard-working people Working hard for you and me Moving higher Time and time again Through the years you'll find us here